Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Ritik Dubgar and I've completed my MBPS from Grand Government Medical College. And currently I'm pursuing my DNB Medicine Residency from New Delhi. In this video, I'm going to take you through my NEET PG counseling journey and also share why I chose to do DNB Medicine. When we got the results of NEET PG, I had a pretty mixed reaction. Like I was not completely happy, but I was not also sad. I got an All India rank of 5,700 and it was my first attempt with internship. So I was happy because it was good enough rank because I was getting pediatrics and psychiatry which were my second and third options respectively. But I was sad because I was not getting medicine from a good college because it was my first option. I was not completely happy because it was not more about getting selected into a particular branch but it was more like I knew in my gut like this was not my best shot. So I was thinking to take a drop because I started preparing for NEET PG very late and the only intention with which I was preparing is that I prepare for the year so that when I start preparing next year, so I can do it very well. And I really, genuinely, I did not expect any rank under 10,000. So that way I was excited also that, oh my God, how did I get 5.7k rank? But after a few days, like I was talking to my friends and I mentioned like, no, I am not getting medicine from good city or good college, which are very big priority for me. So maybe I'll take pediatrics. Then one of my friends told me like, if medicine is your first choice, then do take medicine. If you want it from good city, then take DNB medicine. So then the idea was in my mind, look, okay, I can take, I can think of taking DNB medicine. And then I started researching. So after doing a lot of research on DNB, I contacted Dr. Aditya Gupta sir. He has a very good YouTube channel and I used to watch it. So I just told him my situation, like I have a rank of 5K and I'm not sure because medicine is my first priority and pediatrics is my second. So what should I do? Whether or not I should take a drop because taking a drop with a rank under 10K comes with a pressure because you know, you don't know like few silly mistakes was in the situation kya hai aap, because when you take a drop, the pressure is so high. So maybe kuch questions ke wajay se rank bahut jada fluctuate ho jata hai. So I was like, like scared also at the same time to take a drop. So I told him my situation, like whether I should take DNB medicine from a good city or whether I should take MD pediatrics or what. So like he also suggested me, like if you want medicine, like take it from a good city. So coming to the next section of my video, like MDMS and DNB. So Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has issued a notice that DNB and MDMS are equivalent. But to be honest, like like I cannot, one cannot deny the fact that people prefer MDMS over DNB. So you have to consider a lot of factors in order to come to a decision that whether you want to take MDMS or DNB. The first is bond. So most of the DNB institute does not have a bond. So when it comes to bond to MDMS colleges, you have to do your research. For example, there is no bond in Delhi. Also, there are states where we have a one year bond like Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat etc. So up to one year bond it's fine but if you are taking a college in some state where they have three year more than three year two year bonds you need to think twice if you are also considering to do super speciality. While doing choice filling for NEET PG I did fill MD medicine but I chose to fill those MD medicine colleges only where we have one year bond like i did not fill any colleges which more than one year bond because i am very sure that i want to pursue super speciality also and i do not want to waste a lot of years important factor to consider is exposure i agree in general like there is more scope of exposure in md but if you are pursuing md from a good medical college from a good city if you are taking a peripheral medical college then I don't think so you will be have, have that kind of exposure and even some cases comes which are like atypical case then you will probably refer those cases and even if you treat those cases you will not have a facility of diagnosis or investigations there in a peripheral college. So exposure wise if you are doing DNB from a good city a good hospital load then definitely you have a very good exposure in DNB also. The factor which I am going to discuss is very important it's hands on. So you know, in government medical colleges, we do get hands-on very well. That's why people prefer to do MS like more. Like people do not prefer DNB in a surgical branch that often because many colleges or hospitals do not 
give that hands on because the patient is coming to a consultant he is being paid to do that operation so generally junior residents do not get that opportunity to do operation just except few hospitals which have a really good hands on so while coming to surgical branches you need to do your research and think Coming to dnb i would like to make you aware that in terms of hands on like you need to do a very good research like you cannot take hospital by their big brand names or you cannot take some hospital just because it was preferred at a higher rank last year like you really need to go to each hospitals or you really need to contact to jrs of each hospitals which you are applying that whether or not they get to run the opd whether or not they get to prescribe the medicine whether they get the exposure whether they get to decide the investigations or diagnosis which is very important fourth important factor is academics like we say that in md colleges no they are professors they take regular rounds they teach you they are lectures conducted which was not there in dnb earlier but now considering it now nbems which is an organization which run dnb program across the country organizes frequent lectures nowadays and the lectures are really good when it comes to academics like one big advantage of dnb is that you get a lot of time to study and if you are in a medical branch let's say medicine or pediatrics so if you come across cases in rounds or in opd like it is very important to read about those things hand in hand so that you have a better idea of investigations and clinical aspect of it so you do get that time so you can prepare for super speciality also at the same time and save a year later another very important factor is work life balance like this is a very good thing is like in dnb hospitals like we have a routine hour shift like you know so if it is 9 to 5 or if it is like 24 hour duty also then probably you will have a leave or off next day so which is very healthy because when it comes to md residency in a government medical college it's like very very tough like you need to work for 24 hour 36 hour like you have to sometimes sleep just in the ward itself the little time you get for food or sleep is in the hospital itself so which is again very very toxic so so do your research before entering into some government medical college ask the seniors what is work like because there are some colleges where the department are very very tough or toxic and now the next important point is opportunities so i think so there is not a lot of difference between md and dnb when it comes to opportunity in terms of clinical practice but yeah of course if you want to be in research if you want to be a professor in a government medical college then of course md has a certain advantage but if you want to do your clinical practice it does not matter so much it's more on you like how you carry your practice forward it's not like that you cannot take a government job of professor if you are doing dnb of course there are some criteria so uh, depending upon your hospital if it is more than 1000 bedded you can become professor and otherwise also you have some criteria like you have to do one year sarship or two year sarship to be eligible to be a professor so but when, but when i am talking about like dnb in medical fields i think like most of you would be trying to excel in clinical practice then going into the teaching line so i don't think so that is a very important concern plus like if again if you are pursuing medicine or surgery and you want to pursue super speciality then that's again a benefit like you do not have to do a bond and then can uh, do your dm and then can later become a professor again to conclude myself keeping in context the example of medicine because i am pursuing dnb medicine do take md as your first priority if you are getting it from a good government medical college good place by good place i mean keeping in context the case load over there keeping in context the kind of exposure you are going to get the keeping in context the bond in that state and then second do dnb from a good institute third choice would be doing md from a very peripheral institute with multiple year bonds or from a rural setup where you do not have such high resource or facility or case load and uh, i don't think so as my personal opinion like you should not do dnb from a very peripheral institute because then if you are not doing dnb from a very recognized hospital which provides academics then i don't think so you will get a lot of opportunity to learn in a peripheral dnb institute so it's md medicine from good institute dnb medicine from good institute and then md medicine from peripheral institute so keeping medicine as an example i said that again when it comes to surgery then you have to prioritize hands on 
and decide for yourself and if you have any question regarding dnv do drop it in the comment section or dm me in, on my instagram thank you so much for watching and please like share and subscribe to my channel